Okay, we're going to be getting into some React videos, which I'm very excited about. React has really gotten to a great place uh, throughout 2015. And now coming into 2016, it's, it's very usable, and I think people should be using it. It's a great technology, well worth the effort for both new developers, uh, which will have a bigger learning curve, and for seasoned experienced developers. There's still a decent learning curve to it. So, um, But before I do that, for all the new developers or the, the ones that are not used to module loaders, uh, I'm going to do a video here on module loaders, what that's all about, and Webpack specifically. Um, and Webpack is definitely kind of the module loader of choice for the React community. So if you're experienced with module loaders, you probably don't need to watch this video um, unless you're a little bit, you know, concerned about, you know, what does Webpack look like? So let's get into what exactly is a module loader. Now there's three kind of out there. Earlier on, back in the day, uh, RequireJS.js came out. Um, a few years ago, Browserify, can't talk and type, Browserify came out and kind of competed for a while, and then Browserify kind of started winning out, and then Webpack came out. Now it's kind of Webpack and Browserify duking it out. So they're both great module loaders. I'd pick one of these two for any project. If you're doing React, I'd definitely pick Webpack. Um, it is more featureful, and React kind of requires you to be a little more featureful in some ways. Um, so let's get into it. How do we do this? I've got a very, very basic HTML page right here. Um, kind of show you kind of how things used to be. We'll kind of turn back time a little bit. If I could turn back time, then this is how we used to code JavaScript. We'd have one scripts file that would have all of our modules in it. Module one, two, three. Um, and then you'd load that right there into your HTML page, one script call. Um, if you had a lot of stuff, then you had to start breaking it apart. You had to put module one in here. Boom, let's put module one in there, and let's put module two in there. And then you had to do two separate ones. You had to insert module one, and then you had to insert a module two script tag. So now you're making multiple requests. And then if you wanted to enhance that, you had to use some kind of build script that would concatenate module one JS and module two JS together and minify them together. Um, and those things basically involve, evolved into module loading systems. So we really can now code all our different modules separately, and then we can use kind of an entry point, which would be our scripts.js now, to start the requiring path and to start the, the dependency path, if you will. Um, so we know that our page right here has a dependency on module one and module two, and they have to be loaded, let's say, in that order. Module one has to fire first, Module two has to fire second. Uh, so in this case, we simply go require, uh, we're actually gonna go dot slash module one dot JS. So the dot slash means we're starting in our directory right now. Dot dot slash would be going up a directory or let's go up two directories or let's go up a directory and then it into the JS folder, which I'm already in, which doesn't make sense. So just dot slash module one JS. So that's going to actually import that file into scripts.js at this point right here. And then we're gonna require module 2.js. For those of you guys, of course, who know your browser JavaScript, you know that this will not run in the browser. This is Node.js or common JS code uh, is technically the common JS module system that Node uses. So this will not work. What we have to actually do is use Node.js to convert this into a browser worthy format but believe me, for any kind of web application where you have just tons and tons of files, it is well worth the little effort putting into a build, putting together a build system. So for this, we install Node.js. If you don't know what Node.js is at all, you want to go check my intro to Node.js video, or you can just search YouTube Node.js. At the, at the point of this, it's number one or number two if you type Node.js tutorial. Um, so you'll basically install Node.js. I have Node.js installed right now. Uh, let's go npm init, which this will be covered in that Node.js video. So let's get a package JSON going, and then let's go install Webpack. Um, and I'm also going to install Webpack globally, so I can just run the Webpack command. Once this is done, do 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 do. Okay, while it's going, we'll come back to our file here real quick. So at this point, it's basically going to require module one JS, completely run through everything in module one, then it's going to move forward in a line. So that's a synchronous operation. Then it's going to require module two JS, 
and run through everything in module two. Now these can require their own stuff as well. Let's see if that's done. Excellent, that's done. I've also already run an npm install g uh, webpack webpack so I can run the webpack command. So I've already done that. I'll save you guys the 10 seconds of having to watch it. Now all I need is I need a webpack.config.json file which will tell webpack where to look and how to act. So I'm going to touch that real quick. Uh, webpackconfig.js, sorry, not JSON. Um, and I've actually got a gist here for you, which I'll put the link to, uh, of a sample kind of very, very basic startup webpack config. These can get extremely complicated if you want to do a ton of stuff. But here's basically what we have. Uh, we're saying our context is currently the directory we're in. You know, if you had, say, an app directory that your app directory lived in, then you could do this. If your app lived in a directory called app or something like that. But as far as the relationship from here, all of our stuff is just in this folder. There's no SRC folder or anything. And then right here, I'm, I'm doing a quick determination. Is our node environment production? If so, we're going to run all these minification things. And we're not going to do source mapping. If it's not production, then we're going to consider that debug mode. So then I'm saying if it's debug, then we're going to inline source maps. That'll help our, our console logging and everything. Otherwise, we're going to have no dev tool at all. Our entry point is scripts.js. So this is kind of where we're, we're grabbing our, we're, this is where we're starting off. And then here's our output. We're going to the JS folder and we're going to build a scripts.min.js. And then here's the plugins. If we're in debug mode, no plugins at all, an empty array. Uh, if we're in production, then we're going to dedupe. So we're going to actually strip out any duplicate code. And then we're going to uh, also run the uglified JS which will get rid of source maps and comments and all that stuff and basically make it production ready. So there we go. Let's save that. Let's go ahead and save scripts, save module one, save module two, and run webpack. There you go. That was fast enough. And you see that we have a scripts.min.js. Now clearly this is not minified because I didn't run it with node environment equals production. You can say I got all these great source mappings here. I'm defining some modules and then I'm bringing the modules in. It did add a little bit of extra code in here, which seems like an awful lot for two console logs. But once you get a whole application, this actually makes the code a lot simpler and cleaner. So it doesn't really add a lot of weight to your overall application. Um, and so then if I wanted to go node env equals production webpack, then it's going to run and you can see now it's all minified and everything's nice and teeny tiny and in one line and all that good stuff. So there we go. That's done. Let's go ahead and just run Webpack again. And let's open index. All I need to change. My index is now referencing scripts.min.js. And let's open index.html. There you go. I've got my Webpack page. If I open my console log, they're both in there. Excellent. Looking good. And you can see it takes me there. I need to get the uh, dev tool working, right? Because that's not exactly how I want the dev tool to look. But at any rate, that's working. Let's go back to the console log. Uh, and let's look at these modules here. So now a really great thing is I can use Node or NPM to install some more stuff. So let's say you're a jQuery guy. Everybody's somewhat familiar with jQuery still, right? Let's see, absolutely have to have jQuery on the page for some reason. So there we go, I've installed jQuery and let's also install Lodash. Install and save Lodash. So let's say module one is a jQuery module. It does something that only jQuery can do. So now I can require jQuery. Let's go single quotes. And then I can h1 H1 is going to get new HTML, new text. Run Webpack and refresh my page. And you can see now it runs jQuery on my page. Excellent. Uh, a very cool thing is do I have jQuery on here? Nope, jQuery does not exist in the global scope of my page, which is very cool because jQuery now only exists where jQuery needs to exist. If another module needed to require jQuery, Totally fine. The code does not get duplicated. I'm not going to double the size of my JavaScript file by in importing this twice. It's just going to create a module called jQuery 
and make sure that that has loaded in the proper order where it needs to load. So that's a great thing about module loaders is they do a lot of the smarts for you. And let's say I needed to use Lodash here, which is basically underscore JS for those of you guys who are not familiar with it. Lodash. Let's require Lodash. Let's go ahead and get some data here. I'm using Makaru. Let's make 20 rows of random data here. Let's go ahead and snatch that. Paste that in. Ver people equals. There's all my people. And then let's alert. So let's see how many female people we have in here. Filter people where gender female length. So we're going to alert female count. There you go. Let's run Webpack again. And you'd use something like Nodemon is a great tool for handling all your Webpack. There you go. Nine females. Ah. And then it's also running my jQuery module. So now my modules are completely broken up into uh, just units that do one thing. Uh, there's a little bit of jQuery code happening here. If I had a lot of jQuery happening, then I could easily make another module. You know, say I had a jQuery for form validation. I could make a form validation.js and simply require my form validation.js. And then that could, that form validation JS would also require jQuery and do all of its jQuery stuff. And Webpack will make sure that jQuery exists where it has to and can be referenced where it needs to be referenced from. So module loading, super awesome thing. Webpack, super cool. Great, 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 great utility. It can do so many things. Um, you just go to Webpack's page and you'll get just a glimpse of all the things that it can do. Uh, but there's Webpack. Let's get into React using this basic kind of webpack configuration we have going on right now.